What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a break and working on the camera trailer and we'll start working on these stabilizer legs. Um, so I've got most of the parts together to start those. Um, the MIG welder is now working. Just with an update on the camper, so the parts are sort of getting hard to get at the moment. We've sort of entered another lockdown um, with all this pandemic and that, some shops have closed and you can't, can't go anywhere sort of thing. So um, I might be uploading some different sort of videos, just getting some things done on my car and that, and just some other little jobs, so stay tuned for that guys, but it's all going to be good fun. So these are the stabiliser legs here, so let's start pulling them down. Alright, so here's those stabiliser legs, um, picked these up about a month ago off a friend, um, they were selling them really cheap, so got them home and then realised they only travel about um, 100 mil. so we're going to have to extend those. I've picked up a bit of all thread, so we'll be able to hopefully extend the mechanism inside um, and then we'll be able to slide this tube up inside and relocate that foot on the bottom we'll cut that to length when we're ready um, and the plan is to be able to change a flat tire or something on the side of the road if it's still connected to the car we'll be able to just slide one of these in and um, run the motor up and down and be able to change the wheel nice and easy instead of getting the jack out First thing I notice here um, is pretty sturdy pin and all that that's been made. Um, the only sort of flaw is obviously the gear goes in there, but is this tubing? It's only about probably I don't know two mil thick or three mil thick. So I reckon with a lot of use that would probably start to flog that hole out um, because I would like to mount a motor on the side here. Um, so I reckon what we'll have to do is probably weld a washer to each side and hopefully make that a snug fit. So it would pull both ends in nice and tight and hopefully would reduce a bit of that movement. Um, the next thing is probably trying to adapt this um, screw thread here. Uh, I think they've sort of welded this socket in here with a um, thread in there and they've peened over the bottom. So we're gonna have to try and figure out how to adapt our all thread at the top here to this section. So I'm not sure if we'll be able to possibly um, take this nut off here and weld it to that and then maybe screw that onto there and weld it to this just because this will be a, a nice snug fit. But I think the next thing is to start making up the sockets for the windscreen wiper motors that I want to adapt to the front because I think that's sort of the best thing to do at the moment. Um, so let's get to doing that. So what I just did there was I took a normal um, 3.8 deep socket, cut 
cut the back off and then cut about 20 mil off there. Um, and then I hooked into the lathes and turned down the base right down until just down inside you can see there's a bottom lip there so it's sort of it's basically a spark plug socket this one so down in there would be where the rubber would sit when you pull a spark plug out it grips the plug and stops it from dropping so i've taken that out um, and gone all the way down until there's probably i think there's about one mil left in there just on a little edge um, and then what i've done was i took the arm off the motor that was on the shaft onto there um, and cut that into basically a um, he hexagon sort of shape um, and then I took an old one of these motors I smashed the casing up around the side and cut the shaft off and made this little um, blank here so basically what that's done is giving me inside the chuck of the jaws um, I was able to hook up this little pentagon sort of thing um, and then bolt that in and turn that down to the right size by tightening the nut so if you see that inside, basically it's a nice snug fit now. Um, so there it is down in the bottom. So I'll run a well down in there. I'm just gonna have to be very careful because of this shaft. I'm gonna keep that in there um, just so I don't mess up the knurling inside because on the windscreen wiper shafts, I'll just show you here, they are tapered and they've got the little knurling on the edge just to hold the, um, I guess hold this in place because these are a very torquey motor. So. Here's one I completed. So that, I haven't actually welded that on there yet. So basically you just put your 13 mil socket in there. That comes out. Um, that one's a little bit nicer inside. So that fits there, so I'll, I've given myself a little bit more room there to weld. Now the, f the first thing I did actually check was to make sure that these motors would go forward and reverse because when they're in uh, a normal car, they just, this is bolt, the straps bolted to the body and then they can just go one way, um, but in our use we need them to go both ways, so we need to go up and down, so we'll have to reverse these motors once they're on there. Um, there is different speeds we can set, so I'll play with all that one day when once it's all on there, but for now we just want to get these roughly um, in place and mounted on here. Um, so I think the next step here guys is to probably maybe weld up this and then we can sort of position it over the top of our mount and start to make up a mount for the um on the side of the leg right so i was lucky enough to get given a welder um it was a really good score so it wasn't actually working so i had to go get it fixed but now it's all working and i'm pretty damn excited um so we're able to do things i just i don't have a big enough shed to be able to weld in so it's sort of I have to make do and come outside and you know destroy good tables but that's all right so i think the next uh, next step is definitely We'll um, sort of spray this up with some of that um, this anti spanner I picked up, picked up, so that'll just stop anything from sticking. So this is actually the same welder I used to build my bumper on the uh, 60 series. So it's definitely uh, been put to use pretty well, and it worked out well. So I'm just putting a socket inside to hold that um, that piece up, so when we weld it, it won't fall down. Always got to have safety first guys, so good quality gloves and definitely a good automatic helmet is the key to good welding. sockets we just welded on um, ground down the edges because the welds are going to hit the case of the motor but um, it did actually run into a slight little problem when I welded it it was bound to happen the shaft actually sort of tacks the weld sort of blew in and tacked to that so I had to cut that off but that's all right I got that off and um, surfaces are all good so Later on, I'll probably try and die grind around the edges a bit and make some more room and, and throw a bit of weld in there. But for now, they're 
they've got two good tacks holding them. So we'll bolt these on here. So that didn't really go to plan. I just put the motor onto this little bench power supply I had and it was a little bit wonky. So I thought I'd give it a slight tap on, on the high side with a hammer, but it's actually um, broke the tacks off. So what I'll do is I'll take it back off. If I can. And I'll have a look at the other one. And if that's the same, I'll have to fix that too. So tried this socket. Um, this one's the more straighter one out of the other, so this will, this is still holding up with the tacks at the moment. So I think the next thing we're just going to have to do is we'll just jump on to making up the motor mount. So I'll take these bolts out and show you what I want to do there. So this is a piece of plate, uh, I think 5mm thick, that I had left over from the bumper build. So we're just going to grab this template here, so that normally goes on the motor um, that way, but we can flip it this way because those holes don't change. So we need roughly 60 mil. So I want the motor mount to sort of come down and sort of weld onto the edges there.
I'm just going to give this a test with the um, power supply hooked up. I don't know how this is going to go. I'm leaving these bolts loose. One thing I'm probably going to do is on the actual wiper arms themselves, some motors have got rubber bushing mounts. Um, so I might drill those holes a little bit bigger and put a, um, a crush sleeve inside and then they can sort of, the motor can sort of move around because it's not perfect. I don't have a lathe um, that I can sort of weld on because it, it'll spark and sputter everywhere. So the motor is moving a little bit there, but that's okay. I can, can deal with that. This socket, I got that pretty straight for what it was. And it's not the fastest thing in the world, but it's definitely going to be convenient. So you can see the bottom moving out. So we'll extend, extend this part out further and probably extend that as well. we'll probably have to grease this once it's all finished. But that's not too bad. As I say, that motor is loose, so we'll have to tighten that up. I think that's pretty good there, guys. Alrighty, guys, that's going to be a wrap for today's video on part one of the stabiliser leg build. Um, didn't go quite to plan today, but it's it has certainly worked out, so that's good. Um, there's a lot more work to do, so I'm going to obviously continue working on the shaft for the inside um, and hopefully work on a bit more of the motor mount and stuff but that, I think it's coming along pretty good um, so stay tuned for part two um, in the next video we'll hopefully obviously continue on to that and, and um, start mounting up the trailer so that should be good um, jump over to Instagram for an inside scoop before YouTube I post there a lot so head over there and give us a follow if you'd like Definitely consider subscribing. Um, there's a lot more content to come and I think you guys really enjoy it. So smash that subscribe button and give us a like if you like the video and thanks for watching.